Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Gamedra channel. Welcome to the final episode of Stories Untold, and welcome to the last session. Let's just get straight to it, because I'm so excited to figure out what the f... Post this game in time to pause and get help. Okay, cool. Fun to know. I'm really intrigued as to how this is all going to get roped in together. I'm assuming I'm playing as myself at the start of the house, and that is kind of what's going on. And is my kind of like I deserve this at the start because I linked with them and the trades for the sciences? I don't know, but let's figure it out. I think that's enough of that for now. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Straight into it. All right. Um. Okay. You're quite fond of the show, aren't you? It was a show. It was a fuck. Was it a fucking show? Uh, okay, come on. Let's get you down to the observation room. Oh. Huh. This place must be starting to feel like home to you. Not really. Don't worry. I'll try and get you out of here no. eventually. Okay. So I'm in a hospital. Just in here. Obviously. Okay. Okay. Are we through in the next room? Just relax and we'll get started in a moment. Okay. No worries. Right, Mr. Asian, now are you ready? Just hit record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. This is subject 12-19-86-23, new session entry. Okay. We have myself, Dr. Alexander, leading and in a room we have our patient, Mr. James Asian. As we know, James has recently recovered from a two-week coma following his accident. What accident? In our last three sessions, James's attempts to recollect events of the accident seen him merging his memory with his imagination. Okay. These episodes have always ended in panic, and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. Okay. Let's try and do this one better, James. So when you're ready. Let's bring this back. I know how difficult this must be, but you can do this. James, it's time to remember. Okay. Oh. Your mind, it's like a conscious uh... black box. It can show you your memories. Look into it. Okay. from the rest of the world. Locked inside your coma. We interacted <laughs> with you daily. Encouraging you to wake. Your family would do number puzzles with you. Anything really to bring you back. Okay. People needed answers, James. Do you remember? I have another signal here for you, James. It's at 5610FM. You can't miss it. Okay, so I'm guessing this is just a kind of Kind of like a amalgamation of everything that's gone on. Even the numbers, James. Gotta see this. This is 20F, 12, 19, 86, 23, 04. Type in the numbers, James. Gotta see this. This is 20 F port 12 19. Oh, 86. Hello. Information. What have we got here? So, car accident, I'm assuming. 
fatal accident. Number of vehicles, two. 1986 is when it happened. Okay, so I've been in a coma. Arrived on scene to discover two girls that had been involved in a near head on accident. Mr. Asian found lying down outside his vehicle with head injuries. An ambulance was immediately called. His passenger was trapped in the vehicle in critical condition from wounds sustained in the collision. The driver of Blue Slam, Mr. Hennings, was found dead on arrival. It was noticed that there was a strong smell of whiskey from the driver and an empty whiskey bottle on the passenger seat. Mr. Asian was questioned on the scene. He described an oncoming blue sedan being clearly out of control, which he swerved to avoid. Mr. Asian's partner, a passenger, was his sister. The driver of the blue sedan is an ex police officer of 20 years. Okay, so the girl that we saw in the Flashback must have been, um, must have been a, uh, uh, must have been a sister, sorry, I was, uh, I was kind of, sorry, I kind of lost it. Uh, report. What do you mean, report? Yes, 20F, 20F fatal accident. 12, 19, 86, 23, 04. Type in the numbers, James. Do we have to be in caps? Gotta see this. This is 20F. Get your whiskey out of control. 12, 19, 86, 23, 04. Type in the numbers, James. Empty whiskey, okay. You gotta see this. This is 20F, 12, 19, 86, Try that. 23. Okay. Find the signal, James. Listen to the voices. You have to face it, James. Finally. not like him at all. I've worked with Officer Hennings for six years and not once have we even talked about alcohol. Drunk driving. He, he was a father, a husband. He was fine. No way he caused this. It's him. The door slams this shut. Haitian guy. Plunging you into He's got darkness. something to hide. A light flickers on. Oh god. Oh god. What the f... Okay. This doesn't make sense to you. No, it doesn't. Step out into the hospital ward, only it seems abandoned. Your vision is blurry. All of your episodes are recording to tape. This is the fourth, okay. I sense up someone else is here. Someone else. Fucking. I am tensed up. I don't like this. Oh, key. How do I get the key? Heavy in my hand. Okay. Spent most waking moments in here. Oh, I don't like this hum. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I guess the exit. Don't jump out. Fuck. Alexander. Today was the first session with Mr. James Asian. Although I fear it will certainly not be his last. When asked about events that have happened in the past, he confused fact and fiction and told us a story about a computer game that was talking to him. I think he was back at his own house, his mum and dad's house. Okay. And he always talked about a room with a red X, one he couldn't get in. Utility room. I don't know what any of this means or what it's going to do with the accident, but I guess uh, 
some more sessions or maybe reveal that. We're gonna try again tomorrow. Okay. Now what? Oh. Oh, I don't like that. Stop it. Nope. Okay. Okay, we have a 22-year-old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was awake and mobile at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency ward. The fuck? The other passengers okay. died in the accident. I'm getting no pulse. Prepare for defib. Amp charge full to 10 and give me 100 joules. Come on, 100 joules. Charge amp full to 10. Come on. Clear. Okay. No reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. 200 joules. Keep the amp charged at 10. Ah, hence the heart. Gotcha. Hence the fucking heart in the fucking Clear. safe. Gotcha. Okay, we have a reaction of some sort here, a weak signal. Mm hmm. Let's keep going. Increase again. 360, charge full. Okay. This is piecing together. Come on, 360, hurry. Clear. Well, would you look at that? Okay. It seems we have a pulse. Rhythm is stable. We need to run an x ray right away. Okay. Uh, x ray was this one? Where are we with that x ray? Let's get it going now, please. What have we got here? It looks like an intracerebral hemorrhage. Ooh. We need to drain this now to relieve pressure. Prepare for trepanation. Switch on the drill, please. Oh god. Um. The drill, please. Mr. Asian, you've made excellent progress. Nope. You're doing great. Nope. You nope. need to stay calm and try to relax. Nope. While we go through the next step. Nope. We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this discomfort. Nope. Ah. Makes sense. Oh, fuck me. Alright. Okay. I don't remember there being that much blood at the start. Is that blood? It seemed that blood. Not only is tonight New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you leave on a six month trip abroad with friends. Mum, Dad, and your sister Jennifer have decided for a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room, and as usual, you don't recognize a soul. Look around. The room is full of chatty strangers, mostly friends of Mum and Dad. There is a door to the hall. Go to hall. You push through the crowd into the hallway. The hallway is as welcoming as ever, only this time the folks have put a great big banner up across the main wall. Half inch drinks are abandoned on almost every horizontal surface. Stairs lead up, although the party is firmly downstairs. Let's go to stairs. As much as you'd love to, you promise you stay downstairs with the party. Okay. Uh, look around. Same as ever, stairs, door to the living room, and door to the kitchen. Door to kitchen. Oh, go to kitchen. Sorry. Go to kitchen. They say all the best parties are in the kitchen. 
kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table, and the party is in full swing. Dad has cooked a hog roast, which sits proudly on the table, although no one is eating it. Eat hog roast. <laughs> Maybe later. Okay, fine. <laughs> Look around. There is a utility room and writing on the wall. Also, Jen is here sickening on you. Uh, look at the writing. Look at the wall. Okay, fine. Talk to Jen. I'm gonna guess Jen died. Go to the Jen. Push through, apologizing over and over to get to Jennifer. You hug. You're gonna miss each other. You thank her for the party. She asks if you are enjoying the party. I am. She repeats her question, asking if you had a nice time. I've had a nice time. Answer her. She repeats her question, I've had a I'm trying to say. Um, you tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy it anyway and to loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. You pour Jen a drink and one for yourself too. Okay. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She always has a question. She asks if you have everything sorted for the big trip. Tell her no, but as usual, everything is last minute. Exactly right. Another hug. Your family have really gone out of their way to make this trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective and maybe not fuck up so much. She's going to miss you. You're going to miss her. She walks away. Jen has disappeared into the crowd. You're left standing, nodding and smiling at the approving faces. There is so much to do for this move. Can't mess it up. But first, a drink! Drink. You pour and down another drink. Anything to move the night along. The room is full, there is a utility room and writing on the wall. Read writing. Okay, go to wall. Okay, fine. Go to utility room. You open the door and peer in. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where Dad keeps his fine wines and whiskies. Ceiling to floor racks, a collector, although he does actually drink them too. There is a bottle with a ribbon around it and a card. Card. You pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your dad handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25 year old double malt. You really shouldn't, re you shouldn't really, but you have to try it. With your whiskey in hand, you take in the room around you. There must be hundreds, no thousands of pounds worth of drink in here. You only must thank your dad for the whiskey. Go to. There are racks of fine wines and the door to the kitchen. Okay, go to the kitchen. You head back into the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. Okay. You stumble out of the utility room and back into the kitchen. That is one strong whiskey. You take another swig and give a thumbs up to Dad across the room. He nods and winks. Go to Dad. Go to Dad. Okay, fine. Look around. Busy and noisy, we'll need to find somewhere quieter. Go to Hall. You bumps and laughs on the way through and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's Jen. Covered in blood. Uh, she's staring straight at you. No one else notices. Uh, blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. Go to... What the fuck? I'm sorry. I don't understand. Help Jen. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Um, I'm sorry, I don't understand. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Oh god. Oh, cause I killed her. I killed her. I killed her. I killed her. I'm sorry, I don't understand. We tried our best, Mrs. Zation, but her injuries were too severe. No, I don't understand. I was just talking to her. 
I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I am so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Zation, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. You are standing in the hallway. Something had stopped you in your tracks. While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. She waves her hand in front of you and asks if you can drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. Those were... Oh, fuck. I was drunk. Okay, fine, I go to... <sighs> Very sc Sorry, I'm, I'm so bummed because I know what's going to happen. The living room has a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat on the chairs having a civilized conversation. There's a coffee table in the middle of your room. Your mum is pouring a drink at the drinks cabinet. Tears immediately start to appear in her son. My son... Off to America, she gives you a hug. Hug back. Hug, mum. Kiss, mum. Oh, sorry. Kiss, mum. No, nope, okay, fine. Pick up keys. Get keys. Go to coffee table. Oh, come on. Fine, look around. Sorry, I haven't. Coffee table, drinks cabinet. One of the chairs is overflown with jackets and coats. Okay. Go to drinks cabinet. Go to mum. Ah, oh, fucking. I just want. Go to mum. Okay, I guess it's not there. Look around. Look at coats. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. Jen thanks you for helping her out. She's work in the morning and no one else is in any fit state to drive. You can handle it though. You know the road like the back of your hand, don't you? Yes. Uh, go to car. Exit house. You open the front door and walk out into the freezing night. The cold air hits you. You're glad you have your jacket with you. You're dusting the snow around you as you step down from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house and the car sits at the front of the house. You fumble with the car handle, confused, until Jen tells you to maybe use the key in your hand. Fumbling with the car keys, you eventually get the door open and climb inside. The car is freezing! As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens up the car glove box and hands you a note and a key that was inside. She tells you that it's for when you return. No, I want to read it now. The notice from your dad and reads, Hi son, hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around back to get power and lights on. Also found something in the attic for you. It's in your room. Enjoy. Okay. <sighs> Trying to turn the ignition on with shield. Ah, oh, duh. Use keys. It takes a number of attempts, but you eventually slot the key into the ignition. Start the car. You turn the 
turn the key in the ignition and the car roars to life. Car schools, but stay stationary. Jen suggests releasing the brake, giving you a white ass stare. Oh god. Release brake. Very hesitantly, release the handbrake. Reverse. Drive the car. Put the car in gear and pull out the driveway like a first time driver. You really shouldn't be driving. You, I am driving. Very drunk. On the road. Towards the town where your sister stays, Jen started dozing off as soon as the journey got going. This shouldn't take long. You come to a junction. Is it left or right? Left. Go left. You don't want to, but you better ask Jen for directions. Right, Jen. She grants and throws around to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. You turn the car left at the junction and accelerate off. Confident that you're on the right road now, you loosen up and put your foot down on the excel- No! You feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up in a chair and clutches your arm. She asks you to slow down. Slow down. That's not what you're really You're all over the place, first. James. Pull over. Jen is hitting your arm and yelling at you, crazy sister. Pretty slow, like slow motion. Swerve. You try to react, but your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights merge with your car. The James, outside joins sake, the inside. Over. The whole world around you begins to scream. James! It was at this very moment, wasn't it, James? Ooh, you lost it all. Your sister. Her parents. Yourself. And then you made it worse. Go on. Show us what you did. You wake up in the car. Your world is upside down. Your seatbelt struggles against gravity trying to hold you in your seat. An impact to another car has torn a hole in the chassis. Poisonous fumes spill into your car from the engine. So you're in grave danger. You have to get out of here. Ground. The car is broken beyond repair. The windows are smashed and there is a wreckage all around you. You're both wearing your seatbelts. Um. Exit seatbelt? Can't move, your seatbelt is still in place. Um. Undo seatbelt, I'm sorry about that. How do, what do you call it? Detach? Buckle. Oh come on, you know what you know what I'm doing. I'll remove remove seat belt. You release yourself from the seat. Gravity takes over as you stomp onto the roof of the car. Release Gen seat belt. You've already taken off your seat belt. It saved your life, okay. Um exit the car. You squeeze through the wreckage and fall to your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. A blue car has smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You're standing holding your whiskey and your dad's note and flashing lights are approaching at a distance. Ah. Friend, a crash site. Smoke billows from the crash cars to the sky bar. The exterior lights buckling off. Go to blue car. I put the fucking whiskey. The door is jammed. You don't have time for messing around. Like this, James. With the lights approaching closer, you begin to hear the shrill of the sirens. You simply cannot go to jail for this. You clean the bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey. You then very deliberately spill the remainder of the bottle's contents onto the driver and you toss the incriminating evidence onto the passenger seat. A circle of flashing lights surrounds you, illuminating the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people all staring. One figure steps out and silhouette and walks towards you. Sorry, you are not making any sense. Sorry, you are not making any sense. Sorry, you are not making any sense. Look around. The 
red and blue the flashing lights are causing the pain in your head to be all the more severe. Talk to figure. You try to talk, but you're not making any sense. As you approach the man, the pulsating lights around you get dimmer and dimmer while the pain in your head increases and fall you. to the ground at his feet. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident. That poor man. Me. You have to remember. It was all your fault. I know what you did. How you left me there to protect yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that officer and you wrecked all of our lives. And then you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Yeah. Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Mm -hmm. Say it, James. Do. I can't. Say it. Tell them. Oh. Listen to yourself. Are you following me? It has to end, James. Something familiar about this bit. What if I tell you? It's fucking creepy. Do you not understand? No, I do understand. God. This episode you're having must come to an end. Make it stop, make it stop. Do you remember? I remember. I fucking remember. Stop the session, Mr. Nation. I think we've made progress today, Mr. Asian. Mm -hmm. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Yep. Although I don't suspect it'll take you anywhere. I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Come on. Let's get you back to your shows. I'll see you tomorrow. Like everything kind of like was very weird and Twilight Zone y. Like each episode was just more questions. I mean, I should have I should have guessed the whole kind of thing, because I mean that's that's a pretty generic trope, isn't it, with that sort of stuff. But that was really well done. Everything had its purpose. Everything had its hidden meanings. You know? Um Yeah, it was really well good. It's creepy uh, that parts as well. That jump scare in the second part, that got me pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, so that was Stories Untold. Um, little indie gem on Steam. If you like that video, then hit a like button on the page if you want. You don't have to. Uh, and if you want to see some more videos that I do, then please hit the subscribe button so you can be uh, alerted to that. Uh, but if there's nothing else at the end of this video, I will, do, I will see you in the next adventure that we will take. Until next time, this is Game Jam, signing out.